Good morning, everyone. I think uh, uh, in today's class, we will be discussing the rest of the um, uh, content related to network virtualization. So we'll be uh, discussing about the software defined networking technology mainly. Uh, in the last class, we uh, stopped at the point where we discussed about the network function virtualization or NFV. Uh, so in this class, we will look into uh, software defined networking. Uh, so we came up to the point where we uh, uh, discussed about the uh, need uh, for uh, controlling the network uh, using uh, some kind of centralized node or centralized controller. Uh, so in the network function virtualization uh, case, uh, we use uh, network functions uh, in a uh, installed in uh, you know servers. Uh, uh, and uh, we uh, enable network functions through those servers. And uh, in order for the data communication to happen from one server to another server and uh, from that server to another location in the network, uh, the data communication has to be controlled by a central point or a central node. So a central controller must be there to uh, control and guide the data traffic uh, or the data transmission in the network. So uh, in this case where we have uh, different several network nodes, uh, there should be some kind of central location or a central node which can uh, trans uh, which can tell uh, each of these. Uh, routers, switches, or uh, any other network component on uh, where to, on how to tr transmit the data and on where to transmit the data uh, and when to transmit the data. So those kind of things has to be told by a central central controller. So uh, this uh, central controller is uh, what is actually, uh, uh, what is actually a, uh, Determine in the software defined networking technology. So this uh, this central controller is also known as software defined uh, networking controller. So uh, OS uh, SDN controller. So uh, the controller in here, which is uh, controlling uh, the network traffic, is known as the uh, software defined networking controller or SDN controller. So SDN controller is the main uh, component or the main feature of the SDN technology uh, where the controller is able to uh, like uh, uh, give commands uh, to the network uh, about uh, what to do with the data and how to transmit the data to uh, from one location to another location in the network such that the data can be transmitted in the most optimal manner possible. So uh, in the early ages in the traditional network, we had uh, these routers, switches, and uh, these uh, components working alone on their own uh, when they are given a certain task of transmitting data. Uh, from one location to another location in the network. However, when we have the current networks, the things have changed and therefore the operations or the work that has to be done at each node has reduced uh, uh, considerably because of the having of the central controlling node or centralized controller in the network. So in the traditional networks, we had these all these network nodes or the network points, as we would say, uh, where these uh, network devices that are uh, like uh, uh, supporting the data transmission are known as nodes. So these uh, nodes can consist of routers, switches, hubs, uh, or any other network component that helps uh, in the data transmission in the network uh, so these all these nodes have uh, uh, have something called uh, central i mean control plane and the uh, data plane each of the nodes have something called the data plane and the control plane so uh, in the traditional networks uh, the each of the nodes individually uh, look into uh, con uh, look into the uh, control 
uh, communication or control message communication and the data communication. So control message communication is used uh, by each node to uh, get information about uh, the data transmission before, uh, I mean, uh, before doing the transmission of the data. That means that control messages are used to identify the control uh, that is um, required to uh, receive the data and uh, uh, receive the data properly at the uh, receiving end. For example, like if you take, a, uh, you know, like a wireless communication network scenario, if we are transmitting some kind of a data to maybe a base station and thereby to another device in the Bean City, then uh, when we transmit our data signal, we have to first inform the base station or the receiving end at which at at what uh, at uh, the the specific details of the communication before sending the data. So the control messages are used basically to send those initial messages regarding the communication, uh, such that the receiver will uh, will be uh, notified about the different. Uh, uh, you know, like uh, parameters used to uh, uh, used to encode the data and uh, different schemes and technologies that are used to transmit the data. So based on that, the receiver will be able to receive the data without any uh, loss of data. So uh, in order for us to enable that, control messages are required in the communication and then only we do the data communication. So initially controlling of the data or the control uh, communication, control message communication will happen between the two nodes who are communicating, right? So in the traditional networks, we have all this uh, communication happening uh, and at each node, the node will have a control plane and a data plane. Uh, when we have these two planes to work on, each node has to do the control messaging and the data messaging, both. Uh, so that is a like a heavy concern for the node if the number of data that is communicated is high. Uh, if there is a large amount of data to be communicated in the network to uh, through through the network node to other nodes then we when we when each node has to do all the control message uh, sending part and also the data transmission part it adds a uh, kind of a uh, weight to each of the node so because of uh, this reason uh, the control planes of uh, each of these nodes the control plane of each of these nodes can be centralized into one single control plane at the central controller, so at the SDN controller. So, so the control planes of each of these nodes can be centralized and can be uh, operated uh, at the central location. And that technology or uh, of uh, centralizing the control plane is basically uh, the technology uh, underneath this SDN technology or the software defined networking technology. So the control plane is centralized into a common control plane in the central controller uh, in the SDN controller which is known as in here central controller. So I mean uh, basically a centralized controller is used to control uh, all the control messaging, uh, uh, control messaging in the network, right? So all the control messaging that needs to be done in the network uh, will be handled by the central controller. The central controller will therefore uh, be able to uh, manage the data transmission um, and manage uh, the control messages and manage uh, manage the uh, the commands that the controller has to send to each of the nodes uh, such that the nodes will know to which location the data has to be transferred next right so uh, i mean that is basically regarding i mean centralized controller if you have any questions you can let me know i think uh, we will discuss more about this sdn technology in the later slides
so this diagram shows uh, uh, a, a diagram that i tried to draw earlier uh, so uh, this is basically regarding how traditional networks work and uh, how their control planes and data planes are defined and also it shows how the sdn approach works as i said before each of the components uh, in the traditional network if you consider if you consider the traditional network each of the components in the network has a control plane and the data plane when we are considering the communication when we are considering the communication they has to they have to uh, i mean communicate using control messages and the data uh, data messages before sending the data the uh, data communication has to be planned so the planning of the data communication will be done using the control plane uh, of each of the components so the control plane of each of the component will plan the data communication and uh, plan like in what way the data communication will happen between two devices for example so once that plan is defined then the data plane will be sending the data according to the a specific plan that was created uh, initially uh, through control message uh, through control message communication between the devices after you have sent the data then uh, the transmission of data will be completed however this kind of a traditional communication scheme is going to be difficult when the amount of data that you need to transmit uh, through devices uh, is becoming large then each device uh, in the network such as a switch or a router has to do the control messaging part and the data communication part so once the amount of operations that the each network component has to do increases then uh, the uh, network uh, network finds it difficult to uh, transmit the data without much uh, delay so there's going to be an added delay at each of the nodes if each of the nodes has to do uh, you know uh, initial configuration part and then the tra data transmission part so, so the initial configuration part refers to the configuration um, uh, that we uh, do to uh, enable the communication between the two devices using the control messages so the control messages allow us to do the initial configuration of the communication so uh, when we are doing uh, such kind of uh, uh, i mean initial configuration at each device level then the delay increases uh, for the communication the delay for the communication increases therefore uh, we want to decrease that therefore we we try to decrease that by uh, centralizing the control functions at each of the routers in one location of the network so in one location of the network we uh, we uh, accumulate all the control functions of each of the devices in the network so that a centralized um, you know controller that can control uh, the messaging scheme in the network is known as a SDN controller so the centralized component that has the uh, has the uh, knowledge of all the uh, details regarding the uh, data uh, i mean data transmission uh, in the network the that component uh, can do the uh, you know like controlling of the uh, data uh, in the network so uh, data communication data controlling part uh, can be done through the sdn controller so uh, so more than the uh, i mean in comparison to the traditional networks the difference between sdn architecture is that you have a centralized controller uh, a component called this SDN controller to control the data traffic in the network in the optimal manner such that you can transmit data very fast or efficiently from one location to another location in the network and this can be very efficient or very useful 
once the net, net network size increases uh, with the time. When we take the internet, for example, internet has uh, many, uh, you know, devices getting, in, uh, you know, in, included in the network uh, as the time goes. However, if there are some controllers in this network at different regions of the network, we can control the data traffic in that region using that controller. So that is what we are trying to do in here. And then that is the, uh, I mean, SDN technology is trying to do here. So SDN technology is used to allocate a controller for uh, like large number of network devices uh, and uh, control the controlling messages of all the all those devices uh, at one place. And there could be multiple SDN controllers to control the entire region. There could be multiple SDN controllers, not only one, but two, three, likewise, there could be multiple SDN controllers that are defined for the entire area. So, uh, therefore, actually, uh, 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 SDN controlling is a, uh, is a very important thing. And currently, there are many, uh, you know, SDN controllers used even now in the, uh, in the, by the different, uh, uh, I mean, uh, organizations in the, uh, in the current networks. So what I mean is that uh, Google, for example, Google has its own controlling system that uh, can control uh, like uh, its own network components uh, when, whenever somebody wants to access the Google services. Uh, and uh, the Google has its own SDN controllers to uh, manage the data traffic uh that access that uh, those uh, their servers apart from that there are other servers i mean uh that are accessed such as microsoft uh, uh i mean uh, networks microsoft networks uh, cisco networks uh, google networks i already mentioned there are other big uh, you know network vendors or companies who are uh, who are providing services to uh, the uh, customers. And the customers has to access those servers using, uh, uh, using their dedicated network components. And uh, when they are doing that, the SDN controller can, uh, can be added into the network to manage the data traffic between those network components that are, uh, that are, uh, being used uh, for uh, for for certain uh, applications that the user has asked for. Uh, so anyway, like uh, uh, when we are considering uh, SDN technology, therefore SDN technology is used by multiple companies in the world. So big big companies uh, they use uh, you know SDN technology. Uh, and they are using that to control the data traffic in uh, different uh, locations, uh, in, in different geographical locations in the world. So a certain centralized controller can be used to control multiple uh, network components. So uh, for example, if you take Google, Google has its own SDN controller and its own network area that it will, tr it will control, it will have control over. So one, once a certain customer access those network components, those network components uh, will be controlled by a certain centralized uh, control net controller. Uh, so the centralized controller will will be getting uh, some, uh, you know, like uh, will be uh, getting some requests by the customers and those requests will be uh, obtained in certain standard manner. So when we are um, when we are looking at the SDN controller and it's uh, uh, you know the SDN controller uh, the basic uh, uh, elements of SDN uh, SDN technology it will co consist of three parts the basic components of SDN technology will consist of three parts. Uh, one part is this uh, uh, 
uh, basically centralized controller that we discussed about. And it will, uh, the centralized controller will be connected to uh, the devices. Right? They will be connected to the devices and that uh, devices uh, uh, will uh, will be basically uh, controlled by the controller. So the controller has to know all the uh, de details that these routers or switches or any other network components receive from other devices. Uh, so the controller will know like the request that requests received by each of these devices in the network and uh, the controller will decide uh, the optimal path to transmit the data along the network based on the request. Uh, anyway, like uh, uh, the controller will be connected to each of the network components using uh, a certain interface and uh, the, the, there will be some protocols used to establish the communication between the network devices and the controller. Uh, when we discuss about the protocols that are used, uh, some protocols, uh, some uh, popular protocols are used for the communication between these uh, devices, network devices and the controller. Apart from that, between the controller, uh, there will be another interface with the network application, uh, network application, which will be uh, uh, you, you know, an application which will be uh, accessed by, uh, let's say, a customer telling uh, that uh, the customer wants to send some data from uh, from a certain uh, uh, from a certain location to another uh, destination location uh, under uh, some, uh, you know, mentioning some concerns or constraints. Uh, so what I mean is that, uh, so when we have the, uh, the uh, in here we have the network applications. So network applications can be accessed by certain customers. Uh, so the customers will uh, request for some kind of uh, communication to happen between two, uh, this, uh, you know, between two or uh, between, uh, you know, some source location to a destination location so from certain source to destination uh, the data communication will happen uh, so the data communication uh, will happen and also the customers will request the communication to have specific features uh, so the customers will uh, sometimes mention that the communication has to happen uh, in a certain manner uh, maybe with uh, with low latency and with high reliability. So when we when the customer is telling us to transmit messages with low latency, which means that it needs high uh, efficiency of communication, which means that the communication has to happen with at least with uh, with a very low delay, maybe in millisecond range delay, something very low. So based on that delay that is acceptable, the communication has to happen. So based on that requirement, the controller has to, uh, you know, like a controller has to, uh, you know, uh, organize the communication. So uh, based on the request that the customers made for the communication, the controller has to uh, update the, you know, the instructions that the controller is giving to the network devices uh, for send in the data in that uh, certain optimal path. So uh, the controller has to de define the optimal path also and controller has to control the specific uh, routers and switches for sending that data in that optimal path. So that all that uh, controlling part will be done by the controller. Controlling of the de network devices will be done by the network controller. So I hope it is clear to you. So the network controller will be uh, will be in charge of controlling the data and also controlling the optimal path in which the data will be communicated. And also it will be responsible for uh, re receiving requests from customers or uh, any other, you know, like uh, 
device who's sending requests to this uh, controller to do the communication in a certain manner. Uh, so the customers will tell the network to uh, send the data with low latency, for example. So the customers will uh, send that request through a certain application. That application will access the SDN controller using uh, basically uh, an interface called as northbound interface or we call as northbound interface and that northbound interface uh, uses protocols such as rest uh, uses protocols of the rest api uh, so the rest api uses the uh, protocol uh, basically that is followed under the http protocol for example uh, so the rest api is used uh, by the network applications to access this sdn controller in here uh, so once this uh, uh, once this uh, network application wants to communicate with the controller, it needs to use the REST API, um, and that means that uh, the network application will have to use uh, request functions that are used by the HTTP protocol. For example, HTTP protocol used uh, some request functions, right? So some request functions such as um, the get uh, function, put post function, put function, and delete function. Those functions were used by the uh, uh, by the uh, these functions were used by the HTTP protocol to access uh, or uh, update a certain resource in the receiver, the receiving device. So similarly. These request methods are used by this network application to access certain resources or update resources in the controller. So these request methods are used by the uh, network application to access the controller. So uh, the protocols used are basically a protocol uh, that follows the REST API. The protocol has to follow the REST API and an example of such kind of protocol is the HTTP protocol. So we can say that the network application here has to use a protocol similar to HTTP protocol to access the controller. So uh, those are the main elements of the SDN uh, architecture. So this is the basic SDN architecture. And uh, SDN can, has uh, basically the controller part uh, and then the, uh, you know, like uh, network applications uh, which are accessing the controller and the network devices which are accessing the controller. The main part of the SDN technology is this controller which was not there before. And uh, this controller is used for controlling uh, the network devices uh, uh, such that it can transmit, it can enable the data transmission in the optimal manner and also by considering the requests made by the customers uh, for, the, uh, for the network uh, data transmission. Uh, so I talked about uh, different protocols. So uh, basically regarding uh, Uh, basically, when you discuss about the protocols that are used uh, in the SDN technology, they can be divided into two parts. One thing is the protocols used in the northbound interface. Another thing is that the protocols used in the southbound interface. So the southbound interface protocols are basically divided into two parts. It could be as uh, called as network traffic control protocols and the network device configuration protocols. Uh, so the network traffic control protocols can be uh, like example of the network traffic control protocol is the open flow protocol. Uh, so that open flow protocol is the protocol that enables uh, the controller to control the traffic in the network, basically. So controlling the data packet forwarding in a centralized manner using specific functions. Uh, so open flow protocol is an open source protocol. Uh, which means that the, 
the protocol source code is available online for anybody to access and update if needed. So any company which is using SDN controlling method can uh, install or can implement the OpenFlow protocol by using the source code that is available. If the company wants to you know, update the OpenFlow protocol, they can also do it. Uh, so that kind of flexibility is there with the OpenFlow protocol. Uh, and then uh, using the OpenFlow protocol, the company can, uh, you know, uh, you know, uh, enable the uh, controlling of the network components using the SDN controller. So the SDN controller uses this OpenFlow protocol to control the uh, network devices and control the data traffic between the devices. Uh, so uh, basically, uh, the OpenFlow protocol works with uh, the, you know, uh, uh, different uh, softwares that are installed in the network components uh, for, uh, for enabling the network functions. So what I mean is that the OpenFlow protocol works with the network functions and the virtual network functions that are defined uh, that are defined to do the network functions in the net in the in the network. So basically, OpenFlow protocol helps to data control the data traffic in the network. Uh, network device configuration protocols can also be divided into two parts. This uh, one a network device configuration protocol is a simple network management protocol, or SNMP. And then there's another protocol called the network conf uh, protocol, which is the network configuration protocol. Uh, so these are two protocols that are used to define the device configuration uh, of the net network devices. So the initial configuration of the network devices will be determined first before, you know, enabling the, the, the network to use SDN technology. So first you need to, you know, configure the network to enable the net SDN technology. So uh, the initial configuration will be done using the simple network management protocol and netconf protocols. So these protocols are initially used to initialize the network to uh, use other technologies such as SDN. So another thing is that these, uh, you know, protocols, uh, SNMP and network configuration protocols are not allowed uh, for users to modify. So these are not open source codes. They are codes which are private and they can only be used by a certain person and uh, they can only be modified by a certain person and uh, like uh, anybody else cannot, uh, you know, access this code and modify the code. Uh, so that is basically regarding how uh, uh, and some of the protocols that are used in the SDN controller architecture. So do you have any questions related to that? Any questions? Uh, when, when we talk about the IoT scenarios, uh, multiple, uh, I mean, IoT devices are defined by multiple devices accessing a certain uh, you know local server or uh, edge server so sdn controller uh, technology is uh, proposed for the iot systems uh, and this kind of a, this is one such kind of network which shows an example of uh, connecting an iot network to uh, the internet and thereby to the central server and this is an example where the SDN controller is used to handle the network traffic. So SDN controller is there to handle the network traffic and the uh, network components are co controlled by this SDN controller. So by controlling this uh, router switches and other network components, the data traffic that is added by this IoT network can be handled very optimally uh, because of the presence of this uh, centralized controller. If there was no centralized controller, then the entire network's knowledge will not be available with each of the distributed controllers. You know, like that is the reason why we can 
go for the centralized controller to observe the entire uh, situation or the condition of the network before uh, you know uh, allowing the data to be transferred through net uh, network routers the the data that is getting accumulated with the iot networks is very high so uh, because of that the amount of data traffic that is created in here at the iot level will be very high at the edge server so uh, when there's a huge load that is accessing the network then sdn controller will identify that there's a huge load of data is getting uh, is trying to transmit through the network so in order to facilitate that the sdn controller has to determine the optimal paths of sending the data so the sdn controller will based on some uh, you know like calculations in the network then uh, sdn controller will decide the optimal path for uh, the data to be communicated uh, such that it re receives it at the destination. So uh, for IoT specifically, we uh, we recommend using the SDN technology for uh, reducing the network traffic and improving the late improving the latency or reducing the latency of the communication. So uh, SDN controllers are currently actually you know handled by very large companies such as Google. As I said, Microsoft and other Cisco and other network companies. Uh, so these large companies are actually handling these, uh, you know, servers and uh, network components. So uh, anyway, based on the uh, service that uh, the IoT devices access, they can uh, access the controlling service of the uh, of uh, certain, um, I mean, company and uh, use the uh, use that. Uh, SDN technology to transmit the data uh, like efficiently uh, to the network destination. Uh, so the IoT devices will be uh, adding a lot of data traffic into the network that can be mitigated. Uh, the data traffic can be optimally uh, controlled and uh, you know controlled through the network using the SDN controller. Right. So SDN controller can be uh, you know, that technology for the SDN controller can be accessed by uh, connecting our IoT uh, communication to a certain platform that uses the SDN architecture, or SDN technology. So we can connect our uh, edge server or, uh, I mean, our local server to, uh, uh, to a platform uh, that uses uh, the SDN architecture, it's SDN technology. Uh, so, uh, some of the platforms are actually owned by big companies, as I said, and such as Google Cloud and, uh, you know, Cisco and uh, Microsoft uh, uh, services. So, we need to access such services to access the uh, SDN controlling services. Also, uh, whenever we are accessing Google services uh, or any other web services, those requests are also handled by these kind of controlling uh, components in the network. So according to my knowledge, uh, the, the, the data traffic that we add to the internet will be handled by a certain centralized controller, which has been appointed by the specific, uh, you know, uh, 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 company that has deployed this controller. So those specific companies can be, as I said, the big companies which are doing this, uh, which are implementing this SDN technology, such as Google, Microsoft, and other uh, companies. With related to the uh, SDN architecture, it is, as I said before, control plane is separated with the data plane in the SDN architecture. So the SDN architecture or SDN technology, basically the SDN technology separates the network uh, into two systems, control plane and the data plane. The control plane is centralized into the controller. Data plane lies at each of the devices individually. Uh, so the controller will have an idea about the entire network topology and will know about the uh, different conditions of each of the different devices in the network. So the, the controller will know like what 
devices are facing some kind of failures and some kind of faults then uh, if that is the case the controller will know like the data has to be transmitted in the optimal path such that it avoids the uh, you know non-working routers and switches uh, and uh, allows the communication to happen between the devices which are functioning correctly uh, then uh, once the control messages are sent at to the uh, each of the network components in the topology the controller actually prepares the routers and switches to either transmit the data or receive the data. After those initial preparation has been done by the controller, then the data plane will be responsible for forwarding the data to the destination uh, uh, destination, and that will be uh, transmitted through the optimal path defined by the controller. The controller will define the optimal path to transmit the data from one location to another location in the network. Based on that optimal path that has been defined, then the uh, the components will know uh, in, to which location it needs to forward the data. So after you have uh, done uh, such kind of, uh, I mean, uh, initial configuration of the communication uh, the control plane is uh, basically uh, forming the optimal path uh, for example between a certain device and another device if there's communication happening rather than uh, trying to uh, go without the centralized controller if you if you just transmit then sometimes the optimal path will not be used to transmit the data uh, however, when we are using this SDN controller mechanism, optimal path will be defined from one source node to another destination node. Then afterwards, uh, the, so the, the data communication between the controller and the, each of the network devices will be done using a protocol open flow, for example. Uh, after that, uh, so the uh, Basically, this uh, shows a situation where a request is made by a client to uh, transmit data and the controller receives that request. Once the uh, routers and switches are co connected to the controller, the controller receives that request as a request received to the network. And based on the received request, the controller will decide the optimal path to transmit the data. All right. And... Uh, so also the controller will be responsible for sending the data in the most secure manner uh, so the security of the communication will also be concerned and the security has to be ensured and the controller will send the data on only along those secure paths to the destination also when there's some kind of a um, uh, you know problem in the network with related to the security if there are some kind of a unsecure person trying to access the network and sending some unauthorized requests to the network, the controller will get notified about those unauthorized requests. So the requests that are sent or received uh, by uh, some certain devices uh, which are not, not authorized, uh, such kind of requests will be uh, handled by the controller and such kind of requests will be sometimes dropped by the controller. So another thing is if there are some devices which are not working in this uh, network, some components uh, can be non-functioning. If there are some kind of components which are not working in the network, then such kind of network components will be removed from the network and they will not be uh, considered active. So once they are removed from the network or I mean by the controller, they will be considered non-active and uh, the controller will only send the data only along the active components in the network or the active devices in the network. Uh, so as I said before, uh, therefore, like controller is able to, uh, you know, observe the condition of the, I mean, each of the network components in, the, in this network and, uh, you know, plan the communication based on the uh, condition of each of these network components. So the controller is something like a gold, I would say, 
it's like the code of the network and it will know each and every com components condition uh, and uh, we'll know like what kind of conditions that each of the network components are currently uh, undergoing uh, and based on their situation the controller will define the optimal path to transmit the data from a certain location of the network to another destination location so when we discuss about the uh, network uh, size if the network size of the uh, the network size if the network size is very large then sometimes one controller cannot handle all the data data device or the network devices in the in the network then there then we need uh, multiple controllers to control the data uh, so multiple controllers can be used to control the data in a certain network in a certain geographical area so controllers can divide can be divided for the different geographical areas so the controller can be responsible for uh, one controller can be responsible for this area and another controller can be responsible for another geographical area uh, so the controllers can also maintain uh, the, their communication between them and can make a synchronized communication between the controllers so the controllers can communicate with them and then synchronize the data uh, and the information that they have with the one another with the, with the other controller so there are many benefits of sdn architecture so uh, the sdn architecture can be a cost effective architecture uh, when you consider about the uh, you know like the cost that you have to uh, spend for uh, you know configuring each of the routers and switches in the network so rather than you know configuring each of the devices sometimes once you are having a centralized controller somewhere in the network that uh, centralized controller can uh, you know can control the all the network components in the network uh, so rather than uh, worrying about each network component uh, the controller can uh, uh, can check the condition of each of the components in the network if this is a controller for example uh, each of the network components can be uh, you know accessed by the controller uh, so and uh, the condition of each of the network components can be analyzed or observed by the controller based on uh, the requirement the controller will use the resources optimally uh, to send the data uh, from the from uh, between two devices in the optimal manner so the controller will be able to you know optimize the resources used so because of that the technology of sdn will be able to uh, reduce the cost of implementation uh, so it will be able to utilize the inexpensive switches and uh, it will uh, use the available switches to transmit the data reliable routing or optimal routing can be done by the controller uh, and then quality of the service can be increased by uh, uh, by sending data efficiently to the user in the optimal manner such that the data packet uh, can be sent with low delay and also without much loss you know packet loss can be decreased and also the delay can be decreased so by doing such kind of things we can increase the quality of the communication the quality of the communication can be increased once we reduce the amount of packets lost and the delay can if uh, if we decrease the delay so when we decrease the packet loss content or the amount of packet lost then we can actually ensure that we have sent all the data to the customer uh, such that the customer can get some useful information from that data if we had a lot of packet losses then the customer might not experience a very smooth uh, you know data or data arrival the customer will uh, you know face some trouble in uh, obtaining data in a smooth uh, transition uh, so the packet loss 
users can also uh, decrease the quality. So in order to increase the packet, uh, I mean, in order to decrease the packet losses happening, SDN architecture can be used. Security also can be enhanced uh, by using SDN architecture because the SDN can filter out the, uh, you know, authentic uh, requests and unauthentic uh, requests. SDN architecture can remove unauthorized requests made to the network and protect it from unauthorized requests. So therefore, SDN can actually act as a simple firewall at the edge of the network and forward the suspicious network traffic for uh, firewalls and other kind of security uh, data services to further um, uh, take some action regarding such kind of suspicious data traffic that has that is uh, occurring. So uh, as I said, like a lot of companies are currently using the SDN architecture and they are using the specific, I mean, SDN networks to control the network components. So there are many uh, big companies such as Google, Facebook, Yahoo, Microsoft, Verizon, and Dish Telecom, all these com companies who are using SDN technology. So uh, that is basically regarding SDN technology uh, and SD1 technology uh, is something that we, we will discuss uh, later. So this is an extension of the SDN technology. So I think uh, with that, I will end today's uh, technical uh, discussion. So uh, uh, any questions so far? Uh, so please mark your attendance if, if you can. Uh, so in the meantime, uh, I also have sent you a message regarding the IoT project. The deadline has been extended to 31st of January. Uh, so you have time until then. Uh, another thing is that when you're like submitting the reports, you can submit uh, I mean, uh, the the project report has to be submitted individually by each person. Each person has to submit, right? So even though it is a group project, each person has to submit their report, their group report through the LMS. If you haven't su submitted, then you will not get a mark for that. Right. So this report mark, those things will not, you will not get it because you don't have a submission in the LMS, right? So uh, the, because of that, like, uh, please make sure that each of you make your own submission, although it's a group project. I hope it is clear to you. Another thing is that the report content, the text content, you can make it unique to yourself. I don't uh, submit the same thing that the group is uh, submitting. You you need to discuss, um, uh, you know, the results that you obtain from your project specifically uh, on your own. So I hope it's clear to you. If you cannot, uh, you know, if you are, if you are not clear, you, you can let me know now, or else in the other classes also, right? Um. So make sure that you. When you're creating the report, you uh, write the text content in a unique manner uh, comparing to your group members. I don't try to submit the same thing. Just write on your own the results on your own words, then submit. Uh, then uh, uh, apart from that, the video demo. Video demo that you're creating can be the same for all the group members. You can submit the same video demo, 
right? Uh, the report is the only thing that you need to make some difference. The figures inside the report can be the same. The results that you obtain, they can be the same uh, in the report. However, in the report, the explanation about each of the facts that you mentioned must be in your own words. Right? I hope it is clear to you. And uh, with all that, you have to submit the uh, IoT project. And each person has to submit it on their own. Right? If you don't have a submission, then you will not get the mark for that assignment. So 70% uh, of the CA marks are assigned for the project. So uh, I think it's a huge mark component. And therefore, you uh, please take an attention to that. Uh, so another thing is that from today onwards, we will have the interactive sessions, uh, you know, delivery, lecture delivery during 8 to 10, 8 to 10 p.m. in the evening. I think I sent a message regarding that also in the last Friday, on last Friday. Uh, however, like if you have further questions, you can ask on Friday 2 to 4 in the regular time slot as well by meeting me at the lecture location, lecture hall. You can come and meet me and you can ask any questions you have regarding the module. So I will be there at the Friday, uh, I mean Friday on Friday, I will be there at the lecture hall. If you come, you can ask questions. Otherwise, it's totally fine. You can complete your IoT project during that time slot as well. So I think uh, in today's evening, I will be doing <clears throat> the rest of the lecture delivery during the two hours. Right. I hope it is clear to you and uh, I'll see you then. So that's all for today. So thank you for joining in and uh, I hope uh, you got the idea. So thank you so much. And uh, you are free to leave if you don't have any questions. If you have any questions, you can ask from me. Thank you so much.